Everyone gravitates towards elements of what the Network in Canada does because there are fundamental questions at the, at the heart of it. Essentially what science and technology studies or history and philosophy of science and technology look at fundamentally is what is nature and how do we know it? And that's the starting point. And then you have all these um, different types of questions that spawn from that and that are really, really interesting. Those bring new ideas and new perspectives and new forms of knowledge. The field of HPS, STS, it, which is of course a vast field with many different uh, facets, but essentially it asks what difference does it make that science and technology, but especially science, is a human activity. That it's always seemed to me that the value that I bring to students, the value that I bring to the wider public when I think about science studies, is in really embedding the enterprise of science within the social milieu. That, that these are people that did this with very human um, uh, motivations, with societies that allowed and disallowed certain things. And I think that that's a really important message for people to understand in this scientific society. I think that many scientists, practicing scientists, are largely unaware of the philosophical commitments that underlie the work that they do. And um, I, I enjoy pointing that out to them. Plus, I think you can do good science that way. I think if you actually understand the conceptual structure of a discipline, you can make better contributions to it than if you just kind of assume that you're uncovering the truth, truth after truth, and there's really no underlying agenda, because there is one. So part of what the cluster has allowed us to do is to try to encourage us to talk to each other, um, because we have experts right here on this campus who've been working in these different camps, but by bringing us together and creating workshops for us to, to talk and network and discuss these ideas together, we're actually finding that when it comes right down to it, we're asking a lot of the same questions and engaging in some of some similar material, but we also have different approaches and theories that we're using that are really quite fruitful when we come together and, and discuss them in, in tandem. I think the cluster has helped to mark that as um, something that we should be doing, and it's sort of encouraged us to move in that direction. So when we were designing it, we approached all the the people that we thought were either uh, important in the field or really upcoming in the field, and the institutions that uh, had uh, either real powerful or nascent um, uh, science and technology studies history and philosophy of science centers, and uh, brought them together in a couple of workshops to both figure out what were the main themes that uh, Canada had strength within and also the main areas. And then we struck we had very interesting debates and discussions about what a model would look like of a network and eventually came uh, down on this uh, hub and spoke model whereas the center would be uh, a kind of hub of activity but all the spokes would join a wheel that, uh, that spoke to itself um, uh, in multiple ways without it having to be controlled from a center. So we are now one of the best places in the world to come and, and do this kind of thing because we had developed this fantastic national network that uh, doesn't exist in the same way in other countries. Highlights, I think, from my own perspective have been involving lecture series. One where we had a series called Reading Bruno Latour, which was a range of perspectives on the writings of Bruno Latour, who's often seen as the leading science technology society scholar. Mm -hmm. And more recently, we ran a series on Alfred Russell Wallace marking the 100th anniversary of the death of Wallace. Mm -hmm. And we were able to bring uh, scholars from North America, as well as, in fact, from Britain, to come to University of Alberta to talk about Wallace. I participated in a workshop that was organized by the people on the West Coast in uh, UBC, where they brought in artists, People work in neuropsychology, people work in classic phenomenology studies of empathy, uh, people in science studies. This was astonishing, right, uh, to have these people speak to each other in ways that they had never spoken before. Students all through, from undergraduate right through to postdoctoral fellows, are, are really engaged in broader questions within these fields. 
partly tearing down some of the boundaries, I think, that even that you've alluded to, so history of science, history of medicine, history of technology, STS, um, and starting to borrow from a variety of fields and ask really interesting, sophisticated questions. As a participant, I went to the Situating Networks workshop. It was really neat to see what I plan to do with my research was being done by other people, how they were looking at networks. I look at empire and I, I sort of conceptualize empire as a network because when I was doing my master's degree I was looking at military medical officers and how they were publishing and writing to each other about their conceptions of race and disease, particularly in the West Indies, and so that was a network for me. I think that when students start to understand that science is a human activity, they see their place in it, they feel that they can challenge it in particular ways, and I think we need to we need to um, empower the public, and I see my the students as part of that critical public that goes that, that really is, is uh, going to change the world or not in the, in the next generation. We need to empower that public with knowledge and understanding and questioning about how science and technology work so that they have the tools to really make sure that we're doing the right thing with our society and our, our world. Long-term impact that situating science will have is the way it's really made the community of scholars across Canada in science and technology studies and history and philosophy of science much more closely knit than it had been before. It's given us uh, a sense of ourselves uh, as a distinct community internationally as well. And it's given us a sense of what we can do if we work together. Well, the plan is to, in short, have an internationally renowned, sustainable network. And so the aim has always been to build on that, make it stronger, connect more. And we've done a lot, but there's a lot more to do.